in all that to hang picture frames, you need a solid stored rigid connection where you can drive your screw and your plug into. You need devices like the Franklin's sensor, which can help detect wooden studs and the Bosch Truvo multi-level surface detector, which can help you detect live cables, metal, pipes and other materials with varying dense properties. As you wouldn't want to be drilling blindly with tribal knowledge as you could hit a pipe, you could hit a live cable, which could lead to a short circuit or electrocution. So it is crucial that you take cognizance of where you can install or fix your picture frame. And that's where your electrical safety zones come into play. So ideally you shouldn't be drilling horizontally or vertically from sockets or switches and 150 mil from wall corners and ceiling, but not the ceiling coving. These are your electrical safety zones according to the British standard BS7671. So you would expect to find wiring installed in these zones, but there are exceptions to the rule that needs to be adhered to if perchance engineers decide to install outside of these areas or outside of the electrical safety zones. If engineers encroach the non-electrical safety zones, wires or cables must be over 50 mil below the surface. If the wall is made of metal, it, it will need RCD protection. The cables would be armoured with an earthed armour or metal sheath and should be in the metal trunking and should have protection from at least 3 mil steel. So hence why you may detect cables in areas outside of where you would expect to have live wiring. So you can have cables in the electrical and non-electrical safety zones. And also remember that your devices scan to a certain depth. So if buried deeper, your device may give you intermittent readings, okay? And so now that we're conversant with the regulations, we can proceed to drill and install the picture frame in real time. This video shows you how to hang your picture frames with a stud finder using the self-tapping screw plugs with expansion tubes, open eye hooks and a 6mm plug as an alternative, a picture hanging wire that comes with D-rings which can be fastened onto the picture with screws. First, we're going to use the Franklin's sensor to scan for wall studs behind the wall. Wall stud thickness is about one and a half inches, whilst thimber stud walls are just over five inches. You know, studs are usually placed 16 inches to 24 inches, center to center. And if you measure the three illuminated points, you know, on the Franklin sensor, which is your red LEDs, um, the three any three points on the LED should measure about one and a half inches. So if that aligns um, with points on the wall, I just sort of like mark that up and work out that that should be, you know, a probable stud that's lined beneath the wall. So I use the masking tape to mark out, you know, the position of the um, stud placements beneath the wall. So once at the outer edge to the left, once at the center and once at the outer edge to the right. And basically, prior to drilling, you want to take cognizance of the electrical safety zones. So the British standard 7671 states that where the wall meets the ceiling, there is a 150 millimeter zone where cables should be run. OK, so technically you're prohibited from drilling 150 millimeter from where the wall meets the ceiling. And also you should not be drilling through between 150 millimeter from where one wall corner meets another wall corner. And although this is a door frame or a door lining and the British standard stipulates, you know, the wall corner, as an extra precaution, I will not be drilling, you know, through from the door frame, but it's pretty much up to you. You can if you want to, okay? And lastly, do not drill horizontally or vertically along the runs or line of travel of any sockets or switches, okay? So basically, horizontally or vertically from any switch or socket. Horizontally from both sides of the socket or switch until it reaches a corner or an obstacle such as a door. And the vertical safety zone runs the width of the socket or switch both up to the ceiling and down to the floor. So now that we're self-aware or we have taken cognizance of the electrical safety zones, we're going to utilize the um, drill bit in our DeWalt drill toolkit. 
And so for a 6mm plug, I'd be using the 4.5 and the 5.5 drill bits. So essentially using the 4.5 to pile up the hole and the 5.5 to open up the hole so that when I push in the 6mm plug into the hole, flush with the wall, it provides, you know, an anchored, solid, rigid um, hole plug installation. I tend to use the Fisher um, dual power and um, the very, very good plugs, you know, um, as opposed to the conventional one that came with the um, eye hooks. The quality of the 30mm white, you know, plugs are not as good as, the, you know, the Fisher ones. So now that we have worked out the stored areas, we can pile up the hole first with a size 4.5 drill bit. And you can see that it's been drilled through the center of the one and a half inch stud, okay? And as you can see, I have stopped, you know, where I've got the masking tape on the drill bit. And so essentially, I've utilized the masking tape, you know, along the length of the screw to mark out the actual length of the screw that goes into the wall. That way, um, when I'm drilling or piloting the hole, I do not go past, you know, the actual length of the screw that should be going, you know, right into the wall after I'm done, you know, um, putting my, installing my plug into the wall. You can use an envelope tape to the wall or a dust pan to collect the debris or shaft. The next step would be to open up the 4.5 sized hole to a 5.5 hole, which is close up to the 6mm plug um, mark. Ensure that the drill bit is secure in the chock and hold your drill at 90 degrees. And as you can see, I'm not going past the length of the screw, okay? Where I have taped off with a masking tape on the drill bit, about 20mm in length. The next step of the process would be to soft hammer flush the plug or install the plug into the hole that's been drilled. And so you can see I've marked out my stud lines along its line of best fit or through a scatter plot of line stud points. Suffice to say, you might have intermittent flashing when using your stud finder. So I took the most potent or the most prominent um, illuminated LED point, okay? when trying to identify wall studs and if you've got pencil marks you know that's come off the masking tape onto the wall you know just get an eraser and you know try to erase it if if the pencil marks do not go use like a sugar soap to to wipe off you know the um the pencil marks just dilute some of the sugar soap with water and clean up with a damp microfiber cloth then the next step of the process would be to screw in the eye hook into the 6mm Fisher plug and just screw it all the way down. The next step would be to get the hanging wire into the D-rings at the back of the picture but whilst tying it up, you know, provide some slack um, to prevent, you know, dust and mould from picking up at the back of your picture. So ensure that you leave some slack to help, you know, abate or curtail you know, the um, issue of condensation caused by the interior of your home being cool um, with a relatively high humidity level and the exterior being warm during the summer months. Suffice to say, it's important that your picture breathes at the back, so give it some breathing room. Next stage would be to run some hanging wire, you know, mid right and mid left of the picture frame over the um, D rings. First, run two to three loops of the hanging wire slack over the D-ring bracket. Then twist the left over of the loop in a circular rhythmic movement over the slack of the hanging wire. So here, I'm repeating the process with a standalone D-ring and getting the hanging wire loops in there. Then, you know, subsequently twist over. The hanging wire is quite sturdy as it's got multiple strands in it. So once done, you know, with one of the D-rings, you know, at the mid-left section, you can replicate the process for the other D-ring at the mid-right section of your, of your picture. And like I said previously, you know, just twist it in multiple turns over the slack wire and twist the leftovers, you know, to give it a firm grip before you shred or you cut it through with a pair of scissors or pliers, okay? Be careful as the tip of the wire could prick your finger, so, you know, just, you know, be careful. As you tie the strands together, 
And like I said previously, remember to always leave the slack and you know replicate the process on your actual picture frame. And once done, the next stage would be to hang on your picture. When hanging picture frames, always make sure that the hanging wire can withstand, you know, the weight or the force of your picture or the object that you're trying to hang on it. And with the right tension on the hanging wire, I have installed the picture frame and I'm quite confident that this will not be coming down. But, you know, follow your manufacturer's instruction on how to hang peculiar picture frames. And also do note that the device is used for scanning for wooden studs, metal pipes, plastic pipes, dense material and live cables are not built as a one size fits all. But, you know, a detection guide to an nth degree with respect to finding live cables, stored metal pipes and dense materials, okay? Suffice to say, the detection guide is value-added with respect to finding the safety zones and the non-electrical safety zones required by regulations when installing your picture frame as opposed to a craftsman just, you know, dr drilling blindly using tribal knowledge. You don't want to get electrocuted, you know, or get find a live cable just because you're trying to fit a picture frame. Remember that current flows in all directions, but follows the least resistance path, which means that current will flow through your body down to earth, and you know you don't want all of the blood in your body drying up. Okay, water and electricity are fraternal enemies and up to 60% of the human adult is made up of water. The brain and the heart are composed of 73% of water and your lungs about 83% of water. So your body wouldn't offer any resistance at all, you know, if you get electrocuted. So I can't stress it enough, always wear your safety gear as safety is paramount. If you hit a live cable, get electrocuted and worse off, if you're not wearing your appropriate personal protection equipment or safety gear. And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. It does help the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Goodbye.